Hi everyone, welcome back to the Dr. Sia channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the fifth most common mistake that ISTDP practitioners make, which is overemphasis on cost of defenses. Now, again, this is the fifth video, so if you haven't checked out the other ones and you like this topic, make sure you check out the other videos in my playlist as well. So let's get started. All right, so overemphasis on cost of defenses. What do I mean by that? What I mean is early on in the psychological history, a psychotherapeutic history, if you will, um, therapists would often focus with patients on the cost of behaviors, the cost of certain thoughts, the cost of uh, certain uh, defenses. And what that would do is for patients who are dystonic, for patients who essentially can already see that perhaps their intellectualization or their rationalization is hurtful to them and harmful to them and really don't want to do that anymore and find the ability to stop it with you in the session, that there's a lot of success. So if you focus on cost of defenses and you notice that your patient moves, that it actually affects your patient, that you can kind of go, oh, that intellectualization, can you see how that's hurtful to you and how that's harmful to you? And, and they kind of go, yeah, I can see that sigh and they move on well then you kind of suggest that just focusing a bit on the cost of defenses help your patient to move on but here is what a lot of uh, practitioners may not know and I'm assuming that you're kind of interested at least in psychotherapy and that's why you're watching this but kind of best case scenario you might even be a practitioner yourself and you might kind of be using these techniques of kind of telling your patient that this is bad for you that's bad for you what recent research shows is that it's not focusing on costs of defenses that help your patients overcome their problems at all. It's not at all focusing on the costs of defenses. Actually, what the brain is doing is it's all about how much your brain is silently telling your patient that there are actually benefits of those defenses. So what I mean by that is, as you kind of say a cost, if the patient in their mind has an idea, yeah, but there's also a benefit to those defenses, then the patient is going to interact more, uh, believe more, behave more, think more in accordance with the possible benefits of those defenses. So what we need to be focusing on with our patients is not jamming down costs into our patients' brains, it's to examine the benefits of uh, defenses at the same, uh, as well as looking at costs of defenses. And what I mean by that is, so let me just give you, for example, a, a large example, okay? So more of a, a large scale example. We have all these smokers in the world, people who, who use cigarettes as a way to, um, say, regulate themselves or socialize or look cool even. That's the reason why people smoke. People don't smoke because it causes cancer. I mean, in general, people don't smoke because they want to hurt themselves. In general, people don't smoke because they want to self-harm. In general, people smoke cigarettes because they believe that it has some benefits, that it has some um, positive outcomes, if you will, associated with it. So it kind of becomes, yeah, I'll smoke, yeah, I'll die early, I know all that, but at least kind of I get a lot of friends because I'm really cool and I get to socialize lots and at least I get to kind of be regulated along the way. So what we need to be talking to our patients about is not the cost. That's going to seem repetitive. It's going to be annoying to your patient to kind of hear you over and over and go ahead and go, can you see how that's hurtful? That's harmful. You know, you can imagine if like you've ever done anything like smoking or, or drinking alcohol yourself or any other drug, if someone's just kind of trying to jam down the costs of, of that to you, you're just going to get annoyed after a while. But Really what it's about is more looking at those benefits because those benefits that your patient will declare will not necessarily be uh, benefits for them anymore. What I mean is perhaps their intellectualization kept them safe when they were children. Perhaps it kind of protected them somehow, some way with their parents. But more likely than anything else, what it did 
was just kind of a way to relate to their parents, a way to kind of keep them uh, relating to their parents. Um, what I mean by that is kind of a way to um, keep the parent happy, keep the parent okay, keep the parent regulated, keep the parent um, connecting and bonding to uh, the child. So then when we look at that, once the parent is kind of out of, the, out of the immediate picture, once the parent is not the person who the child has to uh, um, depend on for survival anymore, we have to really look at that and go, well, how good is this defense really? I mean, when you talk about these kind of benefits of, say, for example, uh, minimization, you know, your patient might say, yeah, but, you know, I'm not really important. And uh, as long as I'm not really important, then I get to kind of, um, uh, I won't be selfish and people won't kind of leave me or abandon me. And when we kind of look at that more deeply, if we help them really look at that, all right, so you're trying to min you minimize you because if you don't minimize you, then you perceive that you kind of get this really big head where you become too self-focused and you start well, um, putting too much emphasis into the problems that you have. So it's kind of easier for you to minimize your problems. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Because as long as you minimize, then you kind of won't be looking too egotistic with your friends and then you get to keep your friends. Is that right? And they go, yeah. And there it is. The benefits that they perceive. They think that as long as they minimize, they get to kind of be seen as this selfless person with their friends and life will be really good because those friends will love them and otherwise those friends would not. Now, what do we need to do to kind of break that cycle? Well, we need to really help the person see if their friends in this example are being friendly with them, loving with them, and so on and so forth because of the minimization or because of other factor. Perhaps their parents in the past required them to minimize, but do their friends actually need them to minimize? Another thing is, you know, this idea that, yeah, as long as I minimize, I get to have my friends. Well, if you have friends that need you to kind of minimize you and completely be this selfless person who constantly kind of just brushes across or brushes past your problems and like they're not too big and they don't mean anything and I don't mean anything and nothing that happens to me is necessarily meaningful in any way. Uh, do you genuinely get to feel like you're with your friends? Like, do you genuinely get to feel like, yeah, this is what friendship is about and I feel heard and I feel seen and I feel cared for? Isn't that what friendship is? To kind of have people who see you and, and hear you and love you and care for you? So here we're helping them not look at costs, but we're helping them undo the benefits that they think that these defenses have. And that's where you need to be spending a lot of your time. You need to be spending a lot of your time as an ISTDP practitioner, not just damming, jamming down costs down your patient's throat, but also more often than not spending more time looking at what your patient think is possibly beneficial about those costs. So I hope that this video was helpful to you. I hope that you got something out of it. Please do comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's any uh, other thing that you are struggling with out there with your patients and you've always wanted to ask. Maybe you're ashamed to ask your supervisor. You shouldn't be. But maybe you kind of don't want to ask in your supervision group. Maybe you just feel that I could possibly provide some more answers here today. If you think so, please let me know. Put a comment. Let me know what else you want me to talk about. And I will. Thank you so much. Please remember to subscribe, to press that bell button. And I'll see you again for the next video, where, which is going to be about, I have it down here, assuming anxiety over fear. Hmm. Interesting. All right. I'll see you then.